Welcome to iLecture Online and now we're going to take a look at helical particle motion. We've been talking about how electrons or protons or any charged particle that move through a, per through a magnetic field perpendicular to the field will feel a force that will cause it to go around in circles. But not the velocity of direction is always perfectly perpendicular to the magnetic field. Sometimes it's at an angle. For example, if you look at both the x and the y components, or maybe the x, y, and z components, you can see that they may have velocities other than zero in some of these other directions. So in this case, let's say that there is a particle that at t equals zero moves with a velocity component in the x direction and in the y direction. The velocity in the x direction is 5 times 10 to the 5th meters per second, and the velocity in the y direction is 2 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. Notice also that the magnetic field is in the x direction which means that the x component is parallel to the magnetic field and therefore does not the uh, proton in this case is a positive char a positive particle Let's assume it's a proton it does not experience any forces due to its velocity in the x direction it only feels forces due to its velocity in the y direction because that's perpendicular to the magnetic field using our right hand we take our fingers pointing the direction of the velocity straight up and then since the magnetic field is in the x direction, we point our fingers that way, we see a force in this direction, so that means that even though it's moving upward, it feels a force in this direction, which will cause it to go around in a circular path like this. But at the same time, it's also moving in this direction, which means that it's going to have what we call helical motion. And the objective of this problem is to find how far it travels when the proton moves once around in a circle. That's called the pitch. How far does it travel in the x direction when the the proton makes one complete revolution in that magnetic field. All right, what we're going to do is, again, start with the concept that the centripetal force is equal to the force caused by the magnetic field. So therefore, the mv squared over r is equal to the qvb, which means knowing the velocity in the y direction, which is the one that caused to go around in circles, radius r, we can figure out the radius r using this concept right here. The velocity cancels out with that velocity right there moving the r there, moving the qb down here and turning the equation around, we can say that r is equal to mv divided by q times b. So this is the radius of the path taken by that, uh, <clears throat> by that proton. We know the strength of the, of the magnetic field, we know the size of the charge, we know the mass of the proton, and we know the velocity in the y direction. So this would be the velocity in the y direction. Of course, it doesn't stay in the y direction, it moves in various directions like this. At this moment it's y direction, but you can see it's going to go around in circles like that. All right. So given the radius, we should be able to figure out the period, how long it takes for the electron to move around once. We know that the uh, distance traveled is equal to velocity times the time. Therefore, the time is equal to the distance divided by the velocity. And the period is equal to the distance, which is 2 pi times the radius divided by the velocity. So we can see we can calculate the period if we know the velocity and if we know the radius. And the radius, of course, is given by this equation, which means that the period is equal to 2 pi times the radius, which is mv, divided by qb and divided by v. So we still have this v right here. And notice that the velocity cancels out. And we can see that the period is simply 2 pi times the mass divided by q times b. And then, of course, we know that that's the same period that it takes for the proton to move from this position to this position in one rotation. And so now we can figure out the distance travel in the x direction. We know that distance is equal to velocity times time. So the distance in the x direction, distance in the x direction is going to be the velocity in the x direction times the period. We know the velocity in the x direction, we know the period from this, so this is equal to the velocity in the x direction times 2 pi times the mass divided by q times b. And that will tell us the pitch or the distance traveled uh, when the proton makes one complete rotation in that magnetic field. If we plug in the numbers, velocity in the x direction is going to be 5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second multiply times 2 pi, multiply times the mass of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Yep, we take a positive particle, divided by the charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, 
And finally, the magnetic field strength was given to be 0.8 teslas. So in this particular example, let's see how far that proton travels when it rotates once around in that magnetic field. So 5e to the fifth times 2 times pi times 1.67 e to the 27 minus divided by 1.6 e to the 19 minus and divided by 0.8 equals and it looks like it travels 0.041 meters which is 4.1 centimeters and that's kind of interesting to see so what happens here Obviously, the period is going to be very short. We'll calculate the period in just a moment. You can see how, as it goes around in circles, it moves 4.1 centimeters every time it makes a rotation, and that's what we call helical motion. Let's see how long it takes for that proton to make one trip around the circle. Probably a very short time. Let's find out. So this would be equal to 2 pi times the mass, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, divided by... The charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, and the magnetic field, 0.8 teslas. Let's see what that is equal to. So 2 times pi times 1.67 e to the 27 minus divided by 1.6 e to the 19 minus equals, and it looks like 6.56. 6 6.56 times 10. Wow, to the minus 8 seconds. So you can see it travels uh, very quickly around in circles in a very tiny fraction. It looks like about 65 nanoseconds or 66 nanoseconds for one trip around a circle. And every 6, 65 or 66 nanoseconds, it moves 4.1 centimeters. So it probably moves pretty quick. But that's what we mean by helical particle motion.